Hey, good afternoon everybody. I bought new audio equipment and I haven't had an upgrade since 1992. And the new audio equipment does not have switched AC outlets on the back. So I have equipment, I got four items I need to power up when the stereo turns on. I can't find a triggered power strip. I found one online and they want almost $250 for that. So I went ahead and I bought everything I need to make my own 12 volt triggered power strip using the trigger function on the stereo. And I did it for about $100. I'll just let you know what I did. It's easy if you have some time. It's not much labor. The parts are inexpensive. I'll explain to you what I did and why I did it. And you can make, you can make your own for 100 bucks. Right now I have a Roku. I have a Phono preamp. I have a Bluetooth adapter, I have a turntable, and I have a powered FM antenna that I want to turn on when I turn the stereo on. I don't want that stuff on all the time, and I don't want to have to be keep crawling behind the unit to turn a power strip on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a power strip with a 12 volt trigger. And I'm using an Emotiva ET3 repeater, and the reason I'm doing that is this will totally isolate the triggers of the pre-pro, my preamp processor, from this trigger box we're going to make. So if anything ever goes wrong in here, it won't burn anything out in the stereo. I'm going to use this Emotiva ET3 repeater. This will give me three outputs when it senses a trigger input. It's got a remote and it has an on feature. This can be on all the time whenever it gets AC power. It turns on or it can be remote to where when it receives a trigger input, it turns on. I'm going to use it as the trigger. So right now it's set for on. So as soon as this gets power, all the triggers come on. I'm going to use it in the remote mode. So what will happen is when, it, when I tell it to turn on with the stereo, then it will come on and give me the three outputs. This jack that I'm going to use for the trigger is this threaded portion of the shank is not isolated from the contacts on the inside. So if I mount this in a metal enclosure, it's actually going to bond to the metal enclosure. I don't want that, so I need to mount that in a plastic piece to isolate it. All right, here's, here's what we've got. I have an enclosure. I've cut the holes in it already to accommodate the pieces. You need an AC power cord. Plug it in the wall, we're going to plug it into the box. That's the AC receptacle for going into the box. I'm also going to put a circuit breaker in there, just to be safe. It's a 125 volt relay that's also a 125 volt coil. So we're going to activate the 125 volt coil with a little 12 volt relay that will complete the circuit to activate the coil. This is our, this is our jack for the trigger going in. And then we have our AC outlet to plug into the power strip. This emotive uh, is advertised as a 12 volt output, 150 milliamps. So once this thing receives a trigger from the stereo, it will turn on. But you can see I only get 10.7 out of it, 10.8. So this 12 volt relay will act activate down to 3 volts or 4 volts. To get a 120 volt relay that is 12 volt actuated, they take a lot of current. There's no real spec or standard on current for these 12 volt triggers. So this 12 volt trigger is going to work on about 20-30 milliamps. So this will, this will trigger anything you've got without burning it out. It has a 120 volt coil. That's 15 amp circuit breaker. That's the input for the 125 volts from the wall. That's the outlet with all the ears trimmed off so it'll fit in the box. And the power cord. When this is wired and all put together, this is what we'll have inside the box. We're going to have 12 volts come in from that Emotiva ET3 and that 12 volts is going to key the 12 volt relay. And then the 12 volt relay contacts are going to key the 120 volt relay coil and give you power through the box. Okay, so now we have all the components in the box. Got the circuit breaker, got the power cord going in, Got the trigger, the 12 volt trigger from the Emotiva ET3. This is the 120 volt relay. This is the 12 volt relay. RTV that or I'll glue that in here once I'm all done. And there's the outlet. So wire it up, we'll be good. 
When you plug these two together, a portion of this jack isn't isolated from the cord. So I had to drill a hole in here and then I mounted this jack in a piece of plastic. I put in a piece of plastic so that jack is 100% isolated from the case of this box because this box is going to be grounded through the house electric. And I don't know what kind of feedback that would create if it could damage anything. Now that jack in the plastic is floating. Right now I have the socket and the relay mounted in the box. I pre-wired the outlet while I had it in my hand so I could get the two wires on the bottom, the ground and the neutral hooked up. And now I've got the relay in there. That's the output for the socket. Next, I'm going to put the receptacle for the AC power here. And then that'll get wired to these two terminals. Got everything wired and in the box. I still have this relay hanging. I want to check this first before I wrap that in rubber or a heat shrink and then I'll tack it into the box. Alright, so I have the emote of a three. I have the trigger coming out of it. Going into the box. I got AC power going into the box. And then I have this extension cord with this light. I'm going to put that in the on mode. See if that trigger triggers this box. Okay, we're going to set the trigger on the Emotiva, and it works. No smoke. So since the stereo output just goes to this Emotiva ET3 and just repeats what it sees, it should work just fine. And it was a success. Now that I know the theory works, I'll probably make another one because I don't like the way I had to bend the lugs on this relay inside this box. I should have bought a taller box. This box is uh, 2.3 inches. I should have gone with the 3 inch box. The lid fits without scraping or touching anything, but I don't like the fact of having to bend those terminals off that relay. So now that I know the theory works, I'll build a bigger box. For now, I've got me a nice piece of heat shrink. I'll just put, a, put this into a sleeve. I'll wrap it, put a couple plastic ties on it, and then I'll tie it to something in the box. It'll be good to go. Got the relay wrapped in heat shrink, three plastic ties on it, slid down nice next to that circuit breaker, put the lid on. Okay, here's the real test. I got the ET3 set for remote. I got it plugged into the stereo. I got the box on the floor with the trigger. I got a couple of lamps here waiting for the stereo to come on. Okay, we're going to on. We got a winner. Hope this helps you out. The total cost of this whole thing, that Emotiva ET3, that repeater, which puts out right around 12 volts and has a maximum output of 150 milliamps total. Uh, that, that box was $39.99 and the device I built was right around $50. So that comes out $90, $100. And I said the cheapest power strip I could find, it was trigger actuated, was about $250. I can't find any standard current ratings for triggered outputs because they go anywhere from 3 volts DC up to 120 AC on 12 volts. That box I built, that only takes about 30 milliamps of DC current to activate that 15 amp relay for a power strip. 